Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Joanne Budget Joe, and I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, considering everything that is going on going on in our world today, um, I hope you are all safe and you are all well. And just know, please know that you guys are all, each and every one of you, are in my prayers. Welcome to all of my new channel family members, and of course, welcome to my channel family members who have been with me for a long, long time. I do appreciate each and every one of you, and I thank you so very, very much for your support of my channel. Now, what are we doing here today? It's Tuesday. Well, I have a, I'm going to call it a midweek book review, and the book that I'm reviewing today is Joshua's Choice. It's book number three in the Seven Amish Bachelors series that is written by USA Today bestselling author Samantha Price. And oh my goodness, does she do a fantastic job with this story. The other two are great, but I really, really love this story. Now... Let's get on with it. I'm going to break it down just like I broke it down in my other reviews, starting with the characters. So we have a few new characters that are going to be brought in to this story that we're going to be, as to say, meeting. Now, we already know Nella and Mary Lou from the previous um, stories. We know the Fuller family. We know the Miller family. Now, we're bringing in a new girl, her name, an Amish girl, and her name is Becky Solfus. And Becky Solfus has her eyes set on Joshua. Her brother, John, and Joshua's brother, Timothy, are best friends. Now, then we have um, uh, Adeline and Catherine, and they are Lucy's sisters. There's Lucy, then Adeline, and then there is Catherine. Now, when the story, and then we're going to hear, I'm sorry, I almost forgot one. We're going to be hearing a little bit about another brother, and his name is Jacob, but his story will come after, he will be uh, story four. This is book three. So, this book is about Joshua. Now, when the story starts out, we are at a breakfast wedding, which means that there was a marriage in the Amish community, and that being the marriage of Lucy and Levi. Yes, they did get married. At the end of the story last last uh, week or on Sunday, I had asked you to let me know what you think if they were going to get married. And I appreciate all the comments that I did get back. And yes, they did get married. He proposed to her when they were talking if they were going to stay together or if they were going to go their separate ways. And she said she wanted to stay together. He said he didn't. He wanted to take it a step further. And that at that point, he did propose. So here we are, like six months down the road. And now it's Joshua's turn, the third brother, the, the third fuller son. So Joshua is a very handsome, but on the shy side, um, young man. Now, he is very popular in the Amish community with the younger, with the young Amish girls. And he has taken a few on a buggy ride. Taking an Amish girl on a buggy ride only once means nothing. It's if you take her on a buggy, a buggy ride more than once, that's starting to mean something. When Joshua took them out, he was looking to see if they had any of the qualities he was looking for. In, because now he's starting to look not only for a girlfriend, but he's starting to look for a fra, which is F-R-A-A, -A, and that means wife. So um, let's find out what happens. Well, you know, N Nella and Adeline are best friends, and then Adeline and Mary Lou are friends. Adeline and Mary, uh, and Nella and Mary Lou know each other because of Adeline. Now, 
Annaline, uh, I'm sorry, Mar I've got all these names in my head, I'm sorry guys, um, Mary Lou and Nella and Becky Salfis have their eyes set for Joshua. The only problem is, is Joshua has his eyes set on one girl and one girl only. But she's not paying any attention to him. And he's like wondering why. I've got all these other girls that are practically falling at his feet, wanting not only to, to date him, but to marry him. And then he's got this one who's just like, okay, is he even in my, you know, is he even in my radar? Do I even care about this man? Well, obviously, he's not seeing it in her. And he's really hoping that things can change. So, Nella knows now, because don't forget, Joshua's family is related now to um, Lucy's family because of the marriage between Lucy and Levi. So, Nella is going to use her friendship with Adeline to ask her to go to the sister-in-law, sister Hazel, and ask her to set up an appointment for Joshua to go to her uncle's house to fix a hole in the barn. On Friday nights, the, the Fuller boys, all, or men, I should say, go out into the Amish community and they help people who are maybe can't get out and do things, they're disabled or they're elderly. And if there's like her uncle, Nella's uncle needs his barn fixed because there's a hole in the side of it. So she has asked for Joshua to come out and fix it. So Adeline, being the friend that she is, goes to Hazel and asks Hazel if she could do that. And Hazel says, yes. And she does it. Well, when Joshua gets to the uncle's house, the uncle's not there. Nella's there. And the whole time that he's there fixing the barn, all she does is talk, 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 talk. And finally, she asks him if she, if he feels that there's any way they could date or possibly maybe even marry. And he did not want to hurt her feelings, but he wasn't going to string her along. And he did say, no, that friendship only, but he what he's not looking at her in the way of a girlfriend or a possible wife. Now he did hurt her feelings, but she did accept it and went back into her uncle's house and that was that on that one. Now, then one day he's at work and Hazel calls him into her office and he and Hazel, of course, are brother-in-law, sister-in-law. And she tells him that Mary Lou is outside the, in the back of the shop and would like to see him because he was getting ready to go to lunch. Well, when he opens up the door, there is Mary Lou, and she has a table and two chairs set up with a lunch for him. What better way to win a man's heart is than to feed him, right? No, it's not going to happen. And so, you know, Mary Lou's doing her own little quirky thing and trying to manipulate him and, and do whatever it takes to get him to want to date her and marry her. Now, one thing about Mary Lou, that as I've been reading about her, I know she's a manipulator. She's got her little quirky things that she does, but... What Mary Lou is looking for, first of all, she's been deeply, deeply hurt by Isaac, who did string her along for two years. Um, and then all she wants is to find love, someone to love and someone to love her back and have a family and some kinners, which is children with. Will Joshua be that man? No, because he just told her that. The same as he told Nella. Friendship, friendship only nothing more. Now, Becky Salfus then approaches Joshua with our two brothers, our best friends, and no. 
Friendship, friendship only, nothing more. No dating, no marriage. Now, as Adeline is helping, you know, was helping her friends out to look at Joshua, you know, they want this to marry this man. Adeline knows that deep down inside, she really does care about Joshua. But how does Joshua feel about Adeline? Now, when they're at the wedding, Joshua is noticing this girl, because we're going to go back a little bit, and he needs to find a reason to be able to ask her out or on a buggy ride. And so at the wedding, he approaches her and says, maybe we could get together with some friends and we could all do something on a Saturday. And she said that would be fine. Well, eventually he gets up the courage and asks Adeline to go on a buggy ride. Now her sister, the youngest sister, Catherine, is telling her all this time, you're helping your friends out, but you need to be looking at Joshua for yourself because I can tell that you have feelings for him. So finally, Adeline takes her sister's advice and she does go on a buggy ride with Joshua. Now, let's go back a minute because we're going to come back to that. But let's go back because we're going to bring in Jacob. Now, Joshua was not happy with Hazel for setting up the schedule with Nella. So he goes in to talk to Hazel about doing that. And Hazel apologizes and said, you know, it was Adeline that did it, and I'm really sorry. She came in and asked me if I had have known. Well, Jacob is eavesdropping. And so he's really upset about this, that Adeline would do something like this. And he runs into Adeline at the market one day, and he is with an English girl. And Adeline sees this. Well, he goes over to talk to Adeline and says, I heard what you did um, getting, trying to get Hazel in trouble by bringing Nella and, you know, Nella and Joshua together. And he just tells her off and threatens to go to the bishop on her. Well, she knows he's not going to go to the bishop because then she looks at him and says, okay, but when I go to the bishop and tell him I just saw you with an Englisher, that kind of just, that's it. But that's kind of just like the disagreement between Adeline and Jacob, and it just kind of stops there. Now we're going to go back to J to Joshua and Adeline. And they go on that buggy ride, and he invites her to dinner that Friday evening at his parents' home where he lives. And so she accepts. Now he has to tell his mom. Now his mom may not be happy because she would not have picked Lucy, nor would she have picked Hazel for wives for her sons if she had the choice. She really doesn't care for the Miller family. But I'm sure she will accept, you know, this son saying, I really want to be with this girl. So he goes to her, and the first thing she says is, you know, Joshua, I hope that you will marry a woman that will be like a daughter, which is a daughter, to me, because I didn't have any daughters. I've had all sons, and that's all I ever wanted was a daughter. Well, now he's got to tell her, oh, geez, I'm, you know, going to ask you is it, if it's all right for Adeline to come to dinner, and she knows that his mom is not too fond of this family but he asks her and she does accept and she said that's you know that would be fine well friday comes around and when he picks up um adeline they hold hands and they can't let go of each other's hands so right there it's almost like they have their soulmate right well when he gets to their gets to their home gets to the fuller home he finds out he has to leave and so he's going to leave Adeline there with his family because he has an emergency with Timothy and John. And so she stays back at the house and has dinner with his family. And when he gets back and he's expecting the worst, 
He opens the door and they're in the living room laughing and talking and Adeline is telling stories and his mother, the look on his mother's face, he can tell that she does like Adeline, which is a big plus. So the next day, he and Adeline are going to spend the day together. They're going to go on another buggy ride through the back, the back roads of um, Lancaster and he decides that he's going to take a picnic lunch, which he asks his mother to help him fix for the next day. And she said, I'll take care of it. Don't worry. So now they're on, like, we're going to skip up to Saturday when they're on their buggy ride and they're getting ready to have their picnic lunch. And when they open up the picnic lunch, <laughs> they find dirty dish towels. He picked up the wrong basket. So they go, you know, they laugh about it. And the first thing he says is, wouldn't this be something um, that we can tell our kinners when we, when they're older and we grow old? A good memory, one of our first memories to tell our kinners. So right there, that's telling them both that they are thinking of marriage. And Eventually, down the line, he does propose to her. Now, do these two actually get married? Now, she is only 15, and he's a few years older. So, now they have to go to the parents, Mr. and Mrs. Fuller, Mr. and Mrs. Miller, and, in, and to the bishop. Now, they all have to approve of this marriage, but they can also make a stipulation and say, we approve of your marriage, but because of her age, you have to wait a year or two. Or they could all three, you know, all of them say, we feel you're mature enough and you don't have to wait. You can go ahead and get married because Amish do marry young. So will the bishop give, you know, give his blessings and say, you can marry or will Mrs. Fuller hold out because even though she seems to like Adeline, I'm not, I'm saying, yes, Adeline, will she hold out because she's still from the Miller's family and she doesn't particularly care for them? So what do you guys think? Do you think any of the parents are going to say no? Do you think the bishop is going to let them get married? I guess we're going to have to find out in the next book. Now, there is a surprise here. Because Hazel, the first sister-in-law, Isaac and Hazel, Hazel is expecting her first Bablin, which is baby. So that should be pretty exciting to see what goes on in Jacob's book. So did I like this book? I loved it. I really, really enjoyed it. It was such a cute romance story, very romantic. Just the way these two kids were went about in a roundabout way, even though they cared about cared about each other, especially Adeline. Joshua thinking she wasn't even noticing him when she was, and Adeline was trying to be friends, and instead of trying to get with the man that she really wanted to be with, she was willing to give up that part that part of her life. And just for her friends to be happy. And that's what you call a true friend. Now, would I myself do something like that? I don't know. I don't know. It depends on the man. It depends on, it depends on the friend. I don't know. What would you guys do? Would you put a love aside for a best friend? Tell me in the comments what you think about that. So the next book that we're going to be reading about is going to be with, with uh, Jacob. And we're going to find out just what it is that's going to happen with Joshua and Adeline. So I hope you all enjoyed this book. I would give it a thousand thumbs up, a thousand stars it's an excellent, excellent book. It's a great series to read. What I love about it is because with everything that's going on in today's world, you can sit down with the book and you can take a step into that book and you can read it. Everything that's going on around you 
it's not there for that time that you're reading the book. This has 178 pages, and I read it, or I'm sorry, 186 pages, and I read it like within just hours. It doesn't take that long. Samantha Price books are books you can't put down. So be prepared. That's all I can tell you. Get that cozy warm blanket, that hot cup of tea, or that beverage that you want to drink. And if you want a snack, get into a nice cushiony chair and start reading. Because I'm going to tell you what, you're going to get lost in that book, just as I do. All right, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I hope that you will read some of these books. And I'm going to be back with another video to tell you how you can get a library in your own home that you can borrow books and return books and not have to leave your home. So watch for that. I'll be talking to you soon. Please stay well. Please stay safe. And please pray. Pray for each and every one of us, and may God bless us all. Bye, guys.